Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out the freshly released GNOME 44. There have been a bunch of different improvements and some of them I do quite enjoy. The problem I have with GNOME is every single issue I have seems to uh, be fixed in a version or two. Example is being able to pick your output and input sound devices has been integrated within the uh, kind of system tray within GNOME that used to be an extension before, but that's just another example of something that has been fixed. This release has a lot of cool additions, improvements, and things like that, and that is what we are going to be checking out in this video. GNOME 44 is going to be the default desktop environment on both Fedora 38 as well as Ubuntu 23.04. This video real quick is sponsored by Linode. If you're interested in setting up various services or websites, Linode is a fantastic place to do that. You could pick either just a base Linux distribution including Fedora, Gentoo, Arch, really whatever you need. Spin that up or use one of their one-click installers to easily get a service spun up. I've been using it for Nextcloud, Minecraft server, and if you use the link down below, you can get started today with a $100 60-day credit. And this video that you see right now is actually a video that was put out by the Fedora team. It's a nice little short video that covers some of the additions, including one of my personal favorites, and that's the actual actual background tasks being integrated kind of into this uh, system tray thing. So let's actually dive onto the system and check out some of these new things hands on. So here we are on, uh, this is Fedora Rawhide. If I go ahead, go over here, go to our settings, we can kind of get a good idea of what this is. Uh, if we go down to about, you can see we are indeed running, this is technically Fedora Linux uh, 39, but that's because it's Fedora Rawhide, it's the uh, kind of developer preview branch. What's most important for this video is that we are running the GNOME version 44.0. This is running in the virtual machine, so if there's any performance or graphical things like that, that is why it's running in boxes, flat pack, if you are interested. But first thing, starting off, what I want to do is kind of show this background tasks. You can see right here, I have a song playing, a J. Cole song. I could filter through this album if I wanted to. Hit play. And before to actually manage this, I'm going to close this out and it's going to be running in the background. So if I go over here, this is how you would want to interact with it before. It's still a wonderful way to interact. But now if we go over here, click on this, we will have this option. We have one background app running. Tap on this, we can see what the background is, and through here, you can easily terminate these applications, or if we go to the app settings here, we can see the actual app settings of this through the default system settings page. What you can see right here says run in background, that's enabled, thus giving us the ability to actually do that. Now, a lot of apps are not going to support this out of the box. I've been kind of playing around and seeing if anything else would work. The one reason I knew that this would work is because Baby Woke covered this in a video slightly more detailed than I did. A uh, link to that video will be down below if you are interested. And another thing I'm not really going to be able to show because I'm in the virtual machine is right here there's usually a uh, Bluetooth option. And with this edition of GNOME, they've actually added some additional functionality, including the ability to see all the devices that are connected and allow you to connect and disconnect those devices. And with that, what we're going to do is actually jump back into settings here. So let's open that up. There have been some panels that have been updated. So if we go back in here, first things first, we're going to go into the accessibility settings, which is right here. There have been some additions, which one of them, if we go to hearing, there has been a over, ampli <laughs> over amplification option, allowing you to exceed the uh, max recommended uh, volume limit for your system. If we go back under typing, there's now an option for enable keyboard. So you can access a lot of these features using the keyboard. Under pointing and clicking, we now have a, where is it? If we go up to seeing here, oh, we crashed, hold on. Like I said, this is Fedora Rawhide. It's not really the best thing to use for uh, production sake. Ultimately, there has been a couple different things added under uh, seeing there has been um, an option to make uh, scroll bars always visible. And there has been some additions for uh, blinking at cursors, which will be helpful if those are things you need. If we go to sound, there are some additions. One for alert sound, we can completely disable that, which is something I'm going to do. Sound test window has been redesigned and just some general improvements in here. And now you kind of saw it a little bit earlier, but if we go under mouse and touchpad, we can see some real nice uh, updated animations here to kind of give you an idea of what some of these settings are actually talking about. So now there have been some uh, improvements within the files application. An example of this 
is if I go ahead and open up a new tab here, so open in new tab, and if I were to right click on this new tab, I have the option to move the tab to a new window. The grid view has been redesigned, so if I go into that music folder that I was uh, playing from, go to J. Cole, uh, go to an album, open that up, you could see that that looks a little bit different and we could change the view right here. So this is the grid view here. With that tab thing I was just talking about, so let's go ahead and right click, open it up in a new tab, you can now drag things to a tab. So if I wanted to drag this specific song into home, that is something I would now be able to do. And another thing with files uh, worth mentioning is grid view is now available within the uh, file picker if you're in another application using that. And there's really more improvements beyond this. For example, in Wi-Fi, you can connect via QR codes now. Under the About section, there's going to be a lot more information. Thunderbolt settings will only appear if you're actually using a Thunderbolt device. And now you can actually use or connect to WireGuard VPNs within the network settings. And these are just some of the improvements. This is their official announcement. I've covered a lot of this stuff in this, but if you go ahead, scroll down through this, you'll get a lot more information, including some of the other improvements. But what I wanna cover for the rest of this video is the new Circle members. I've actually done a whole video on kind of Circles, what it is, and some of the really nice kind of GTK applications that are included in that. And this right here is some of the new additions. The first one here is a zap. So if I go ahead and open this up, it allows you to play sounds from a soundboard. Now, is this going to... Unfortunately, it is not passing through to OBS. That's okay. You get the point. If you click this, you can select a file and add more and just make a whole soundboard that you can use, whether if you're streaming or really <laughs> doing something you'd use it for. I don't have one on hand yet. But this application here will supposedly allow you to control and configure your Elgato Stream Decks from a GTK GNOME application, which is awesome. Emblem here is a cool one. It allows you to generate kind of these uh, symbolic icons. So if I open this up real quick, this right here is the actual application. So I could pick colors, gradients. So if I wanted this, for example, to be a slightly lighter blue, you could see how that looks. I could pick if I want the icon to be lighter, dark, circular, square, and then you can pick an SVG image to kind of drop in there. It really, if you're doing this in GIMP or something, it kind of uh, speed lines the process a little bit for you if that's something you need. And of course, you could use a PNGs as well. I don't have any on my system, so I can't really demo that. This one's kind of silly. It allows you to generate a placeholder text. If you've ever like installed a website template, and there's a bunch of gibberish kind of in the text fields by default. This <laughs> lets you make that if you would like to. Workbench is a really cool one that is definitely beyond my pay grade, but this allows you to uh, code, develop, and preview GTK applications. And you can see all the support, real-time previews. It has a library of examples. So if you're interested in GTK programming at all, this is something to definitely kind of play around with and look into. Alternatively, we have this guy right here. This is a Kam, Kamiku, I, I'm way too uh, American to be trying to say these things. <laughs> Basically allows you to sort, read, and search through all your different uh, MAGA comics or whatever you happen to be wanting to read. Again, nothing I'm ever really going to use, but cool nonetheless. I really like how integrated and how just together all these applications are within the GTK ecosystem. It doesn't really feel like you're out, for example. If I drag in the uh, Opera web browser, you can see it just doesn't fit with what's going on in the system. It looks kind of weird. And I'm going to be kind of experimenting with a GNOME web and some of the uh, new extension support and stuff like that in the future. But in addition, we have Chess Clock. This is a very self-explanatory kind of application. Simple, easy to use if you've ever played chess properly. Anyways, this is a, a chess clock application for you. We have an eyedropper. There's a ton of different eyedropper applications, including some extensions, which I personally prefer, kind of integrated within the GNOME shell. But this one will give you uh, palettes and uh, some more options and things you could do with it beyond what some of the kind of uh, extension color pickers will allow. So that's something I might kind of dive into in the near future at least for my personal use. Then right here we have Elastic, allowing you to design spring animations. Actually, let's go ahead and download this one too real quick. So there we go, let's open it up here. And there we go, <laughs> definitely a good looking application. So with all the default settings, if I go ahead and play this, ah, oh, see, that's cool. 
And uh, like if I lower the initial velocity, whoa, let's up the damping ratio, up the mass a bit, and decrease the stiffness to almost nothing. <laughs> so yeah, animation and animation with programming is uh, again another thing that is uh, beyond my skill set. But we have various snippets for Rust, C, really whatever you need if you want to incorporate these types of animations within your applications. And I'll reset that so now it's uh, not <laughs> as dramatic. And then uh, just kind of another silly one here, we have a kind of a, a magic eight ball within our GTK interface. Randomly generated kind of a yes or no's that we get from this. I'm not even really gonna try to say it. Calvariant. So we are going to ask, should you subscribe? to the Tech Hut YouTube channel. You should most likely subscribe to the Tech Hut YouTube channel because we upload all kinds of tech content, whether that be hardware reviews, Linux focused content like this. It's really a fun time. And if you liked this video, you'll probably like that video I did on some of the circle applications. Or if you're looking to install Fedora on your system, check out my post install Fedora guide. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day.